name is Jamon Clash, and I am an all-around creative, do some design, photography, um, mostly in the marketing space, and I do a bit of creative um, direction for at the school program back in my hometown of Savannah, Georgia. Um, so today, I'm just kind of um, giving you a story on my experiences in these spaces. Um, I love the crowd. It's just real intimate, so we're going to have some fun with this one. All right, all right, all right. So with a show of hands, I would like to know who's ever been to a black Southern Baptist church? Okay, 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 okay. So me, I'm not religious by any means. But me going to this church was one of the best experiences of my life. <laughs> oh, man. Have you ever seen a pastor get on top of the cues and dance around? <laughs> what? That was amazing. Seeing the older women come down in aisles in their church crowns, I was like, girl, you in style. And I like that. <laughs> that is what I'm talking about. Seeing the kids running around, going into the fellowship hall, over the collard greens and the yams, I'm like, man, I feel at home. Like, this is nice if that was the community. That was that culture. These elements are missing in technology for me. I am 22 years old, and I was not introduced to Silicon Valley until I was 19. That is a problem. One of the greatest places in our generation I did not know of until I was taking my first steps into manhood. So if I was having that problem, I know the younger kids are having the same. That hurt my heart. So I figured I needed to address this issue in my community first. I could tweet about it, I could cry about it, but let me do something about it. So I took five 13-year-old boys. We sat down, and I'm like, I want to teach you something about technology. So I figured I might need to introduce this foreign concept in a way that was relatable to them. So we decided to go into game development. So on the first day of class, I asked them, what's the first thing you need to know to build your game? One, without any hesitation, shot up and said, violence. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you're right. <laughs> but <laughs> you could tell he really felt like that was it. Like he did not know need to know anything else. So this this did not throw up any red flags here. I figured, you know, he, he's young. So I tell them, you would need to know how to code. They scratch their heads. Once again, no red flags. So as the class went on, I went in to introduce them into different elements of technology. At the class, the teacher come up to me and is like, why are you doing this? What is this? I looked at her. Like, you're a lot older than I am. <laughs> Not aware of why we're doing this. So I said, okay. So I then had people from the principal to the librarian ask me, what are you doing? What is this? That scared me. It's like, you guys are in a technological revolution and you have no idea that it's going on. So I have made me understand that there was a lack of context in this community, that they just really did not know why or where this fit into the world. So as I began to teach my classes, I realized that once I provided some type of context of what I was teaching, that the kids gravitated towards the content and the theory a lot easier. So that made me think, if these kids are having this problem, I'm sure it's a problem around the world. And that made me think that if we could provide context for people of color, that the content and the theory would be a lot more easily digestible, which would then fix a lot of our diversity problems within technology. So I began to scour different companies that were doing this. You have the great people like Beats by Dre. They're infusing a lot of context and culture within their product. You have the great people at Walker and Company that is introducing a product named Bevel for people of color, providing that culture with that context. So then I realized, okay, okay, there are people out there who get it. 
but it's a very small number. So with this, I ask you all, if you see a young person, if you see someone of color, talk to them about what you do. Talk to them about why we need software developers. What is a project manager? What does a product manager do on a day-to-day -day basis? And don't be afraid to offend. Yeah, that's how we learn. We have to be open up to different cultures. We have to be able to step on some toes and you know really get down to the nuts and bolts. Otherwise, we will stay in our comfort zone. And nothing grows in a comfort zone. So with this, I want you all to sing a little bit more, you know, rejoice a little bit more. Hop on top of those pews and infuse this context and culture within technology. And with that, thank you. So, a lot of that's been addressed, right? I mean, have you heard of code.org? Yes, I have. Uh, or, and then the hour of code. And yes. so, like, I found, like, personally, like, my son's three. As soon as, as, soon as we get this reading down, mm -hmm. he'll be coding. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, that's just how it is. And, and I do agree that there's a lot of people who don't understand that coding will be pretty much as essential as reading, writing, and, and math, right? right. Like, it's just an essential skill. And I know that we're all, I mean, we're here, so we're biased, right? Absolutely. Um, a little bit. But that's because we're a part of making things different. Yeah. And other people kind of get the back end after it's already different, right? Absolutely. Um, so as far as a quick way to kind of inject that, code.org is awesome. Uh, if you contact them, there are code.org qualified uh, instructors. Um, they can go to elementary schools, middle schools, high schools, uh, and do the hour code. Uh, well, we'll do the hour code inside with the in the school, but you can also just do an hour code that is online on code.org that is completely uh, done online, right? So there's no, I mean, as long as the kids can read, they really don't need uh, any adult supervision. And it's uh, totally contextual too, right? So. I mean, they have Elsa from Frozen and Dora the Explorer and every, you know, stuff to get kids interested, right, and want to do it. And so, like, as you do, you know, loops or, you know, ruby loops or set up arrays or whatever, you know, you're helping Dora get through her adventure, right? And so it's not just a bunch of work. It's, it's fun, right? Yeah. And so definitely I would say look at that. And there's some stuff that they refer to as other uh, – I guess some of their inspiration as well. Um, so if you're looking for stuff for kids, code.org, our code, um, just quick shout out to Chef, they pay me. Um, <laughs> so we totally came in and automated all their stuff for them uh, just because we thought what they were doing was awesome. Absolutely. Right. So yeah, I would just say that's a, that is a mature place to, to jump off, right? So if you want to enhance that, at least look at what they've done first so you don't reinvent the wheel. Uh, definitely, definitely. Uh, just, I'm going to get to you guys' question, but to address that, we um, we did Google CS first. Okay. Um, so that introduced um, a fashion component, a storyteller mm -hmm. component, and game development. Um, but the one biggest problem that we did have was that these kids saw LeBron James, they've seen your Jay-Z's, they've seen people who look like them, dress like them, and felt like them, mm -hmm. But code.org did not really address that for us. Yeah, they had, I mean, the, older, um, the older they get, the less code.org has for them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I, I feel like now we need to have that superstar in tech, you know, that could dress like us, speak like us. You know, I've just now found my LeBron James and um, Jay Z in the tech world. You know, I was like, man, this is my man. He looks like me, he talks like me, he right. listens to the same music I do. And um, that's Tristan Walker. You know, that guy was like, that we need more of him. And I think right. once we get more people like him, our kids will definitely gravitate towards it a bit more. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Hi. Um, so hearing this talk, you know, there's a lot of diverse, diversity here as it is. And so to me, this sounds like a call to action to everyone. What can people who maybe aren't already a part of that community to help build that diversity? Um, one thing you can do um, is just 
be you and very confident in you. So if you're Asian and you are on Twitter, talk about your culture and you know and how it relates to technology and just basically saying I'm an Asian woman, you know, we're we're not represented much in the technology. But this is the music I listen to. This is the uh, things that I do because there will be another Asian young lady that seems like, wow, that's someone I can be like. You know, typically um, people in technology fields are um, they are introverts, so they're very introverted and they don't want to, you know, kind of be confident and show the world what you have. But I feel like that is needed because it's going to inspire someone to hop into this field. So. One thing I'd like to point out is, uh, being a minority in tech, a lot of times we were taught to blend in rather than to stand out, mm -hmm. and uh, that's something I've learned um, recent, more recently, is just to talk about my experiences in tech, talk about how being who I am affects um, my perception of tech, the tech world, how I'm treated, how I act, how I respond to people, and that's one step that you can do is talk about it whether it's publishing blog posts, whether it's tweeting, whether it's Facebook posts, people need to understand what it's like to be in this world and that it's possible for them because I'm no, I'm no different than anyone else to be in this world too. Absolutely. My man got it. I like it. <laughs> we have time. Oh, I got a time? We're done. Oh, we're done. I'm sorry, guys. We can speak later. Thank you all for listening.